Today, I'm going to get started on my drill press project. So I've needed a drill press for quite some time now, and I finally have been working on a plan for the past couple weeks, and I think I've come up with something I really like and will be really useful. So why don't I walk you through that a little bit, and then I'll just get started on this. So this is what we're starting with, a 10 amp drill that I've had laying around for probably five years. And the idea is to put this drill inside of a plywood box and then wrap that plywood box with another plywood box. This would allow the inner box to slide up and down as you rotate the handle. Uh, I'm using a cable drive to drive that inner box up and down and you'll see how that works in a little bit. If you connect this head assembly to a secondary arm, you can actually pivot it by up to 90 degrees. That might be useful in the future. And then if you attach that arm to a post, you can actually slide the whole thing up and down for thick pieces of wood that you're working on. But for today, all we're going to be looking at is this head assembly. And then in the future, I'm going to have multiple videos outlining the rest of the assembly. Virtually the entire thing is going to be made out of three quarter inch and half inch plywood. So I began by ripping the half inch plywood into the widths of strips that I needed. I used my circular saw and then I have this quarter inch piece of aluminum that I clamp to the piece that I'm working on and I use that as a fence. And that is a pretty reliable way of getting a relatively straight piece. Once I had the pieces for the inner box ripped, I cut them to length for all the sides as well as for the bottom piece. This bottom piece is really important because it's what actually holds the drill into the box. A little while back, I created a special depth stop from a miter saw, which allows me to cut a groove partway through the piece that I'm working on. So I use this stop to cut grooves in all four sides of the piece that goes in the bottom of the box. This will allow the piece to slide and clamp down onto the drill. Next, I prepared to cut the slots, which will allow the bottom piece to slide. These slots are cut the same way as before, but they're set inboard from the bottom of the piece by about an eighth of an inch. With the slots cut, you can see how the bottom piece fits into the sides. Next, I had to cut a large hole in the center of the bottom piece to allow the drill to go through. I came up with this method of using a push pin and a paper clip to draw the radius. Then I drilled a small hole which allowed me to slip it over the blade on my scroll saw and then I simply cut out the inside of this circle using the scroll saw. This isn't the most accurate way to do it but at the time I did not have a bit that was the correct size to drill the hole which meant that I had to do some crazy things to get it the right size, including taking the drill and running the chuck through the hole. Do not try this. It, it really is a little bit dangerous and didn't work terribly well. But eventually I got it the right size and cut the piece in half. Next, I had to drill some holes to allow me to clamp the two halves together using some bolts. However, as I drilled the hole, it cracked the piece and yeah. So I started all over again with three quarter inch plywood instead of the half inch plywood and proceeded to cut the grooves and then I bought a hole saw of the correct size to drill the hole because I really didn't feel like doing the whole thing with a scroll saw again. And that was a lot easier. Once I cut the two halves, I was able to fit it onto the drill and then drill everything out. You'll notice that when I'm drilling, a lot of times I'll use a small bit before doing my final bit size. This allows me to correct the position of the bit ever so slightly if I tend to be off after the first hole is drilled. So now you'll see the bottom piece. I've drilled the holes and then I put in these 90 degree adapters to allow the quarter inch bolts to screw in. If I need an accurate hole drilled through a piece from both sides, what I tend to do is drill from the one side, flip the piece, and then drill from the other side. I think you can see part of the motivation of why I need a drill press. If you look at the second handle for the drill, you can see these little cutouts, which also help hold the drill and keep it from turning in that handle. So I decided to copy that on this bottom piece 
So I carved everything out with the Dremel tool and I even had to do a little recess with the sanding drum. But you can see it locks into the drill very nicely and that should be much more secure. Once that bottom piece was ready, uh, it was just a matter of gluing everything up and then once you have the glue on, screwing the box together. You have to be careful not to screw into this front piece as that needs to remain free so that you can clamp down onto the drill. You may have noticed with this design that the drill is inside of the sliding mechanism, which means we need to cut a piece out of the box to allow the handle of the drill to pass through. With the inner box complete, I moved on to the outer box, which is made from 3 quarter inch plywood. After ripping and cutting the side pieces, I was able to simply screw the outer box together and basically just get everything all lined up. I like to use a square in this case just to make sure that all my corners are square. Obviously in this project it's pretty important. I also had to cut four narrower strips for the inside front of this outer box. These pieces will be used to support the rod which drives the box up and down. For all of these pieces, I tended to glue everything together just to make sure it's a really nice, secure connection and I don't have to worry about anything falling apart. To prevent play between the inner and the outer box, I decided to put little sheets of aluminum in between that can be adjusted in and out by using small Allen head bolts. Numerous holes had to be drilled both to support the sheets as well as for the Allen head bolts. In total, there would be four movable sheets and four stationary sheets, which would be opposite the movable sheets. The movable sheets are placed on the front edges of the outer box, as well as on the side of the outer box uh, towards the handle. For these front pieces, I had to extend these quarter inch holes through the front face. So I simply clamped them inside and then drilled from the outside or inside out to align them properly. After getting all the holes drilled, I proceeded to assemble the front face. However, once I had it assembled, I realized that I had neglected to recess the hammer in nuts. So since I couldn't drill with my fastener bit into those holes, I had to press in some dowels which would allow me to drill those recesses. Then I was able to run the fastener bit in and recess those holes nicely. You simply can knock the dowel back out of the hole and then proceed to hammer in the nut. I know this is a really complicated project, but if you guys are interested and want more information, I'm going to be releasing an Instructable once I complete the entire project. So you can head over there and check that out. You can download the SketchUp file and really just get a lot more information on how I made this. After I cut the slides, I proceeded to drill the appropriate holes in them. I had to actually recess those for the heads of the screws and then cut some dowels to basically allow them to slide in and out without falling out between the boxes. So once you have the dowels made, you can simply screw those to the movable plates and put the movable plates into the front face as well into that right face of the outer box. Then you can also screw in the stationary plates in the opposite sides and screw the entire outer box together before you slide the inner box into it. You can see how I tighten up the slides once the inner box is in to reduce play. After I had the boxes made, I realized that I had neglected to drill ventilation holes in the boxes to allow the drill to breathe. So I basically just cut some ventilation ports over top of where the vent ports were on the drill. I also had to cut a second slot for the handle of the drill in the outer box. I knew that one of the trickiest parts of this build to do without a drill press would be the drilling of the 5 8 inch hole from opposite sides of the box. Fortunately, I had a really long 5 8 inch auger bit that I could run through the hole with. Although I didn't get the hole perfect, it was still accurate enough that the 5 8 inch rod that I'm drilling out here fits through smoothly 
and it basically does not have any play. I originally was going to use a half inch rod, but since I'm going to be wrapping a cable around it, I decided to increase that diameter just to give the cable a little bit more to grip onto. For the cable drive mechanism, I had to create some aluminum plates and L brackets to basically attach the cable to the top and the bottom of the inner box. I made sure these pieces were attached to the box very securely because there's a fair amount of tension that's going to be pulled on them by the cable. This quarter inch hole that I just drilled is for the bolts that will eventually attach the ends of the cable to. As generally happens, there's more than one thing you neglect, and this was another one, cutting out the tops and bottoms of the aluminum pieces to basically make room for the drill to pass through. I was gonna use the jigsaw, but the hacksaw was just too appealing, as you know if you've watched any of my other videos. I used a short and a long quarter inch bolt to attach the cable to the inner box. After drilling the bolt, I slipped the cable through the hole in the short bolt and then clamped it using a simple U-bolt cable clamp. This end of the cable was screwed to the outer box and then you simply wrap the cable around the 5 8 inch shaft. I would hold the cable tight on the shaft with my thumb as I would loop the next loop of cable around the shaft and then as I would pull tension on the cable I could release with my thumb and repeat that process over and over again around eight times. Once you have the cable wrapped around, I could put all of the guide rails back into the outer box and then slip the inner box through and unscrew that little bolt and put the little bolt through the slot I had prepared in that aluminum piece on the bottom of the inner box. Next, you pass the other end of the cable through the long bolt, which is on the top end of the box, crimp it, and then tighten everything up. I took a quarter inch steel rod and heated the ends of the rod before hitting it with a hammer to lock that into the hole that I had prepared in the 5 8 inch shaft. Not the nicest way of doing it, but it was easy and it will not fall out. And that was it. That is how I made the head for the drill press. It's funny whenever I start these things, I always think it's gonna be relatively simple, but this thing was much more complicated than I thought it was going to be. And I'm not near done. So keep checking back because I will be continuing to work on this. Next up, I'm gonna build a speed controller for it. And then after that, we'll have the stand and everything else associated with it. So if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification. That way you know when I drop videos. And I will see you guys next time. That's it.